Hi, I'm Daisy Oliveira, and this is Daisy Talks Miami. Yes, we're talking breaking Bieber news like everybody else is. Well, what happens now? Which charges will stick? Over the weekend, news broke that Bieber's manager Scooter Braun and singer Usher, who is Bieber's mentor, flew to Panama for a much needed sit down with the Biebs. What happened between them is still a mystery, but Bieber and his crew left Panama. And there are still more serious charges pending in Los Angeles over Bieber allegedly egging a neighbor's house. Well, on the Bieber panel today is attorney chef and cookbook author Anna Kinkosis, who also has the dubious distinction of having been on The Real Housewives of Miami seasons two and three, which was quite entertaining. Also Richard Wolf, top entertainment lawyer. He's represented over 40 record companies, negotiated over 250 contracts, representing artists including the Beatles, yes, the Beatles, and the voice winner Cassidy Pope and Two Life Crew and Luther Campbell. Well, thank you for being here on this very momentous occasion of speaking about Bieber. Anna, let me start with you. Uh, you're a mom of two fabulous daughters. They're in their 20s, early mm -hmm. 20s. Yes. Um, you experienced the sudden fame and the press scrutiny and the social media coverage from being on The Real Housewives. And this was very sudden. You're there, mind your, your own business, your mom, you're an attorney. How did that affect your girls? And how do you see that affecting Justin Bieber, who was much, much younger and not as sophisticated an upbringing from what we can see from, from what your daughters have? Right. Well, I mean, first of all, it's not really a fair comparison. Uh, we don't get as much attention clearly as you know Justin Bieber who has millions of adoring fans and you know I think that because of all the attention that he got and the fact that he was so young he probably you know felt that self-entitlement I don't think that my daughters felt that they didn't get quite as much attention let's say as I did and I was you know 40 you're a grown-up 40 something and um, <laughs> And, you know, I kind of knew I was grounded. I, I think that my girls had fun with it. They knew what to expect. They weren't very interested in that whole aspect of it. They didn't take it very seriously. And it didn't involve anybody adoring them and telling them that everything that they did and every word out of their mouth was somehow magic. Mm -hmm. And I think that I kept them grounded because, you know, my girls know better. It's the <laughs> yeah. Cuban upbringing, you, you know. know it's, and, it's, the, and the mothering aspect. Um, absolutely. We'll go back to that. Richard, having dealt with so many top artists and definitely just from hearing in the media, all these artists that kind of start spiraling out of control and, and somehow it seems it happens when they're younger. What's your take on what's going on with uh, the Beebs? I think clearly he's out of control. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's a sense of entitlement. It's uh He's doing what he can. It's like, uh, you know, your kids will do what they can get away with, and then they push the envelope a little further, and then they push the envelope a little further. Well, I think that's what he's doing, but only on a much bigger scale. Uh, you know, the thought of him going into a strip club with $75,000, uh, which is oh, what I okay. heard. Um, I, I could do something much better with that. Just go into Neiman's and throw it at the associates. Well, just, just bring think, me couture. <laughs> just think about how big seventy-five thousand dollars in singles are. It's probably a wheelbarrow. Was it in singles? In singles. Well, how do we know this, Richard? <laughs> that's, that's what I hear. So um, <laughs> he's hooked in. So, so it's um, he's doing what he can get away with, and you know, as you say, none of the charges are really that seriously when you think about it. They're all misdemeanors. They're all relatively simple you know, run-of-the-mill crimes that are... Exactly the kind of crimes that Roy Black uh, usually represents. Yeah, of course, of, of course, course, of course. And, you know, he did make it a point to tell the press that he wanted this to be treated like any normal case. Right, and, and I'm sure it is being treated like yeah. any other normal case. But it's, it, it, they, they are not serious charges, but they are indicative of a much bigger uh, situation. And from the people that he does business with, they need to worry. For example, he is a brand. His image is a brand, his face is a brand, the kind of music, his persona, everything about him is a brand, and it's targeted, marketed to a particular kind of consumer. And those consumers are not the consumers that are buying um, urban products. They're, you know, the young girls that are buying the products. They're and moms and tweens. They're moms and well, tweens, I exactly. Mean, you go back to Chris Brown, 
when mm -hmm. he slapped Rihanna around, he lost his double mint endorsement. I mean, he will lose endorsements because the brands are very, very skeptical now to you know back somebody up when they're not setting a good example, and he's not setting a good example. And I, I'm sorry, but I blame the mother. But it goes a lot further. The, the record company that's fronting him money mm -hmm. is going to be afraid to continue to front money if they have less if he's confidence because he's on the success of the next record. Unreliable. And, and the and I'm going to get to that. And the endorsers are going to have. Uh, you know, look what happened to Tiger Woods, how many of his endorsers ran away because he was no longer the person that he was perceived to be. So a lot of those endorsers are going to run away. Uh, people that hire him for concerts are going to think, well, I don't want to give him $250,000 to show up next Friday in the hope and intent what that he's going to... if he doesn't show up? if he up? doesn't, then I'm out of the money. So, so a lot of people that do business with him are going to start to think twice should I do business with him? And that's going to start to affect him in his pocketbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's lost credibility, and with credibility comes reliability and everything else. And he's a kid. He's a kid that is unsupervised. What should his mother have been doing? I mean, I know it's hard because basically he's the boss. He's paying the I, bills. I think that when you rob somebody of their childhood, you have an obligation to step it up parentally. Um, he did not have the benefit of going to school. He did not have that structure. The mother, you know, I always think the mother is held to a higher standard. The parents, because that's not really fair. The parents really, really need to tell him, no, you can't do this. No, well, you can't do that. The father hasn't been in the picture for most of his young life, and he appeared now in the past uh, from from research I was doing the past couple of years and so and he's right, supporting course. the father and the father is out partying, partying with, him. with him yeah this is, we've seen this with Dina Lohan we've seen it before I yep. think that if Britney Spears right mm -hmm. Britney Spears but you know Britney Spears mother was a little bit more level-headed I think uh, I don't really know Patty or is that her name mm -hmm. Patty but if she wanted you know Hervé Leger's hair extensions and you know red soled shoes she should have just become a real housewife or something. She did not have to put her son in this situation. I think that there's a way to have talent. Look at the Jonas Brothers. Mm -hmm. Their family was very united. They kept it together. There's not, yeah, never any parenting. huge scandals surrounding those kids. So I, I think that the mother, you know, I hate to blame them, but really, you know. But they were kind of the ones in charge. She was. Well, I'm gonna take an they enabled I'm, I'm going to take an opposite. Tax. Oh, don't go against me, Richard. No, I'm not going against you, but <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, I think there comes a point in time where the child becomes the parent and the child loses respect for the parent, especially in that kind of situation. Because, and especially right, if he's but footing if you the bill. respect for your parent, whose fault is that? Well, I understand that, but I mean, unfortunately, that's the reality yeah. of the situation when, when the child suddenly has $30 million and the parent is beholden on the child to pay their own rent. The parent becomes subservient to the child. Oh, and the, absolutely. And the demands of the child will outweigh the parental wishes of the parent. So, so although it's easy to put the blame on the mother, you can't in this case, you know, without knowing more facts. And perhaps it's just that uh, he took over the situation and the parent couldn't control him anymore. And so perhaps it is someone like Usher who he looks at as, as a mentor. Mm -hmm. Someone a, much younger, obviously. Uh, well, who's had a sustained career, who who uh, made it at a very um, early age, was not one of those child stars, but was able to parlay it and parlay it and parlay it into bigger and better things. Maybe he is someone that can take a hold of him and have the respect of Mr. Bieber and you know, gather him in and rein him in and put him on the right path. If he is charged with a certain crime, like an ag aggravated felony or anything like that, which they're saying that this egg throwing thing could be considered, mm -hmm. they could deport Daniel, him. Yeah. And there is already a slew of petitions, even to the White House, to deport Justin Bieber. He has really fallen from grace. There are not too many believers left. There really aren't. <laughs> Like three yeah. on Twitter. Well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll take another tag. Oh my God, Richard, really? Yeah, really, perhaps, and I'm not saying this is the case, <laughs> that this is part of his plan to reinvent himself and that maybe he's really. Miley? Yeah, maybe like Miley, he's realizing that. Going from little kid to gangsta. Going gang from stuff. little kid with, with one uh, fan base to taking it to a new fan base to reinvent himself, but at least he'll continue on with a career when he outgrows his existing fan base. So maybe that's part of the plan.
You are the little devil. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Wolf, Ana Ginko says, thanks so much for being My on pleasure. Daisy Talks Miami, and we will see you next time.